uh, or show you a few different things that we use electrical resistivity for. And similar to what Uso Song was it from DR D National? So so nine. So no. What? So nine. So nine. Okay. From uh, National showed some geotechnical examples of tunnels or of, uh, what was the other one? Anyway, of tunnels. So this was construction of a dam for a mine? And we did an electrical resistivity line, 2D, and found the fault zones. Yeah. And so they drilled holes and for a mine, uh, what they used to do is grout, grout the uh, bottom of the uh, dam. Grout with concrete. Uh, you put concrete. They fill concrete in. This is a power dam, so it has a reservoir behind and a river running there at the bottom. That's a power dam dam. This is the big and it was 400 meters long from here over to here. This is about 60 meters high. And we were testing it to make sure that it was working properly. It's an earthen dam, so it's constructed of silts, clays, sands. And this is the natural flow underneath the dam that they would like to see. So this is a 3D slice. We did a three-dimensional survey with a line in the reservoir, a line of electrodes in the reservoir, a line along the top, a line here, and a line down here. And that's how we can get a 3D image. So we had 120 electrodes out for that survey. This is another dam. This is in Kyrgyzstan. So we did a survey along the top of the dam, just 2D. Because the dam was leaking, and so with the dipole, dipole, and the winter schlumberger, we saw where the leak was. So This is another uh, three-dimensional survey. This is a, a dam. It's a rock dam here and soil behind. This is the downstream side here. This is the upstream side. This is actually um, uh, kimberlite tailings. Kimberlite is uh, a diamond mine. Kimberlite is a dynamite mine. Was that diamond you said? Diamond Diamond. 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 Oh. Say. <laughs> So in Canada, there are uh, there are about six diamond mines. Six diamond mines. Diamond mines, yeah. I'm out saying do that. Yeah, tough issue. So this is permafrost down here. It's frozen. Permafrost, ice. Ice. It's frozen. 
Hey, no, frozen soil. Yeah, the dam that's frozen as well. But they had water leaking out down here. So we did 2D lines. And my 2D survey lines were there. And uh, what they found was that um, they have. Um, a geotextile liner, a plastic liner right here. Plastic liner could be there, ma. And that was stopping any water from coming through, which is what they wanted. And it there was plastic liner? Just water coming through the top of the dam. So just rainfall and, and ice and snow melt. <laughs> So the liner was working here. It was stopping the water uh, from running through the dam. And this is the same dam with, this is all the conductive zones, and this is all the resistive. And it was working to stop the water from coming down. This is uh, a survey for deep water. It's 3.35 kilometers long. Yeah, deep water. So this you, you can't see. Uh, I can't see it. This is about uh, 200 meters. And this is the fracture zone where the water was. And and they drilled down and they used this water to process. Uh, Oil. So I give you told me about the yin and the tail of the camera. And this was an old uh, mining facility that they covered over with waste rock and they wanted to know where the bedrock was. Waste? Waste rock left over from a mine. So uh for my job banner to have left in Halas Rock. The mine to be rock down it, jump down jump here in it, have a look at it near one. So it was an open pit copper mine. The copper mine. And you can see we're seeing down about 60 to 70 meters. So even more, more 80 meters. Yeah. And, and we can see the bedrock underneath. But bedrock sheet as a feeling, man. But it's, it's too deep in this area here. So with 2D lines, you can also make this is called a fence diagram. Fence? Fence. 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 Well, good fences make good neighbors, yeah. That's a fence diagram. Look at a fence diagram. So, fence or chance you, but chance you diagram. These were about 600 meters long. And here we were looking for old mine workings and water. So, the old mine workings are filled with water. Old mine working means. Uh, former coal mine, the old mine. Mine a honey, mine mine a honey. Yeah, the year when I have, no. And they were coming in to build on top of it. So lara so apo ma do tu sao chino lara chu ba ne. So they want to know where all the uh, old mine tunnels are underground. So I am a tunnel, but like now the Vietnam she le so don't see no tai na chu ba ne. And let's see. That one you've seen. This is an example from underground in a salt mine. Salt mine. Yeah, 
potash. Do you know potash? Fertilizer money. Fertilizer? Potassium. 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 Took that mine. So regular salt is, uh, uh, is uh, sodium chloride, NaCl. NaCl. That's yeah. table salt? Yeah, table salt. This is KCL. The KCL, the potassium, potassium chloride. Potassium so chloride took that mine, huh? This is a 3D survey. Every one of these lines is a, a current AB injection. I line the AB injection at your body. I need it like this AB. So we had electrodes in the underground tunnels wrapped around most of the area of interest. So I don't know. This this mine has water coming into it from above. Through cracks in the sedimentary layer, so the yeah, so the aquatard has cracked and water is coming through. And this is to show that the quality of the data set. It's all really densely contained, just like uh, with process when we were looking at, let's see, so same, this is 2D, a good data set in 2D. So what 2D, the arrow counted data set today. And this is a good data set in 3D. It's all really well contained. So, in, in this survey, we collected 120,000 data points. 120,000. And we throw out about a quarter to a third of that. These ones are here. These ones are here, we throw away. And we're looking for the conductive zones. This is water probably coming down. And this is the dry resistive salt. So at this same mine, we did a whole series of 2D surveys. We did about five kilometers. That's about five kilometers of line. And wherever it's conductive, that's water coming down into the mine. So they pump these areas with grout or cement to seal them off. And we're we're a thousand meters under the ground. Three thousand feet. And there's the waterfalls coming through from up above. And that's uh, about a uh, 50 centimeter hole. So, that's it, 50 centimeter. And this is what the 2D, so we, we stick the electrodes in the ceiling of the mine. So, my arm, I'm loving it, my head, the four minutes early, see when it goes down. And this one, this is another 2D survey that's <coughs> over almost 1.2 kilometers. Along the drift, and they know they have a problem with water above the mine. And so that's <coughs> what we see here the conductive water. And down in the drift, uh, in the mine tunnel, we actually saw uh, salt sickles hanging from the ceiling. <coughs> So and that was in this area. So this area the electrical resistivity worked really well. 
And my electric car is still there, yeah. And one final one. This is a 3D survey. That's about uh, 300 meters by 200 meters. And they had water. That, that big picture of the, uh, of the waterfalls was right really over here. So with the 3D electrical resistivity, they were able to drill up. This is the conductive area. And they grouted and sealed off the water pouring into the mine. So they drilled holes from two different directions. And they found water in these zones here. And they pumped cement in to seal it off. And this is the geology here. This is in France at a research tunnel. Research? Research. Uh, research to the And this is a limestone fracture zone right here. And I got a total egg way down here to buy. You can see it just a little bit. There's a lighter color of rock. And my young new day, tell me, do you This is 500 meters below the surface. But when the rain falls on the plateau above, water starts to drip into the drift about five hours later. Through the fractured limestone. So that's a 2D survey along an underground tunnel. And then we did a 3D survey putting electrodes down the boreholes. So I have 3D survey and my electrode tape it Don't you like about it? We survey now. And it shows that fracture zone right there. And my equator on the sheet is rough. Yeah, right? That's a 3D slice of it right there. Yeah, so one more, this is a mine shaft. Mine it's shaft. 120 meters deep, mine shaft. With a drift, with a, uh, you know a mine shaft? Mine shafts are a mine, look there, with a ton of mine up on the new one. Two mine, two inbox. It's lined with concrete. But concrete that man have it up, look at it, lying up And so, um, it leaks. And so, uh, actually, this section is about uh, 400 meters long. And these were the uh, conductive zones right here where there was water. So we had 400 electrodes in. Um, a circle. In three lines. So there was 140 electrodes, 140, 140. Yeah. Over, yeah. over about, uh, about actually this is over about 200 meters. And we were able to image resistive and conductive zones, and they drilled holes and sealed them off, filled it with concrete again. And this is the this is the one that's only 400 feet deep, so 120 meters, and. This is where water was coming through the concrete into the shaft. So they went down into the shaft and they drilled small holes and pumped concrete in. And that stopped the water from coming into the uh, shaft. 
So that's just some different applications of, uh, of the electrical resistivity that we use for electrical resistivity of Plutonia is the how the moon and in it the other than a cat for geotechnical purposes for geo for engineering the engineering what to you geology engineering the paper I think that's it Yeah, so Ren, do you want to, or Kevin, do you want to uh, do something? So, so the unit that you have, there's a lot more things that you can do with that 72-channel syscal than just looking for water. You can also find voids, and you can find uh, um, different types of rock, minerals with it, that sort of thing. But of you, course... You know, the syscal, but not get uh, one plus that, unless or... And we haven't even shown you much in the way of how to lay out a 3D survey, but maybe that in another year we'll show that. Uh, Doug's here, by the way. I don't know if he wants to. Okay, Doug, do you have anything to say? Uh, sorry? Uh, Kevin needs a bit of a time to get oh, the out. Yeah, just a sec. Let me see if I can check it on the internet here. Oh, sorry. I, I never turned my, uh, do you want me to turn my mic on? Do you want me to turn my mobile off? Oh, uh, it's okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, just a second. Yeah. Are you using mine? Or uh, I'm not sure, but I'm. I, it seems like I'm on. So I just need. I need to send one thing.
I think I just tried to click on it. I yeah. don't know why that. Well, you showed it being connected. I don't know if it's like a control or alt and click. I don't know what the equivalent for a right click is. So now I'm trying to stay on there. Why do I want to be on state? You want to tell it to forget the network. And then you're going to basically try and connect again. Sure. Ah, I mean, all I want to do is transfer one PowerPoint slide to Coco. <laughs> We're trying to get your certificates. I've got them here on a PowerPoint slide. I can't email them. Yeah. Right, let's see if I can do this. I'll just take a second. Okay. So that's the slide. I just want to send that to Coco. Google's unable to well, open my email. show some things about the, um, I mean, it might segue to what, what Ren is doing about yep. what happened in the, in the village when we did our survey. Did you sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I just, I just did that. Is that what's that? I just did that. Oh, because I've got all of them sitting there. So I guess while they figure some things out, I'm going to see maybe how much you uh, have remembered what I talked about this morning. Does anyone remember uh, the the two sort of what what geophysical inversion is able to do, or the two the what is a good solution? Does anyone remember what a good solution is? So it needs to it needs to explain the data and it needs to show us something close to the geology. Geological, geological model, and the solution. So, this morning, more or most times, we show you when things work very easy. So, 
Now we will show some things if uh, the answer is maybe not possible. So we did the survey in the village, and the survey line is like this. Is this a straight <coughs> is this a straight line? No. Where along this line do you think your answer will be the 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 worst? Right here. Yes. When we use the computer program, we assume the line is straight. But here it is not straight. So we expect maybe some error. Yeah, so I want to show you the effect this had on the result. So this is the dipole dipole data. And I use the same strategy as I did for the data this morning. So I let it tell me a good starting resistivity. I pick the same alphas, which are a standard value. The standard value then we All of these parameters are the same. So the first thing, what what do we want to look at first? Do we want to look at decay curve? Data misfit or the model? What is the first thing we should look at? Yeah. Saying the curve? Very good. First thing we look at is the curve. So at the start, when we lower the beta, beta and, we, and we find a solution, things look good, and it starts to be flat. Was my inversion able to reach the target misfit? Target misfit go double jet. So does the black line ever cross this dotted line? No. No. So I pick uncertainties. I think I know the the noise on my data, and I think I can explain my data with this level accuracy. So do you noise go to the and well, I cannot. So this this tells me my uncertainties are too low. Or I cannot find a solution that explains the data very well. 
with my tools. So I just want to tell you that I have a solution for you. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that. So now we look at the predicted and observed data. This is the pseudo section for our observed data. Observed data is pseudo section. And I picked the seventh solution, the, the seventh iteration. And this is the predicted data from this. We can see that near the surface, I actually, I can get some of the features. I see this, this low resistivity area. I see this. But below, they do not match. So near near the surface, I can I can pretend that it is a 2D problem. I can pretend that my line is straight in a small area. So to about line But if things are spaced and I am looking deep, then I start to see that I cannot describe with 2D line. Yeah. So when we look at, uh, if I try to look at some of these solutions where I try to fit the data better, I still have the same, the same thing. So to do it. So this result, the curve tells me that I cannot explain the data to uh, the accuracy that I that I want. And this tells me that my my answer, my model, does not explain the data everywhere. So, if I look at this model, and I did not look at all of this, I might try to do things with it, because it looks reasonable. So, the model is reasonable, and it looks reasonable. But for an inversion result to be good, you must explain the data. So now we're going to try to do interesting things to find a better solution because of this challenge. And if we look at our Wenner Schlumberger data. Wenner Schlumberger data net better than Chile meso. Then we see the same thing. We do not hit target misfit. To do it in Chile, you know the misfit yet target target misfit ga ho. Is that line is only? So we. Anyhow, but T U me abu. So we do not explain. Data to the accuracy we think we should. So data was a man 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 gas of man man a little room machine and machine jana. And we can see near surface we explain the data. Because old one at knees on the amount of it. But I will come come you've done a net in the day. But at depth we do not. So and never never buy my data to go when we are done. And so we do not want to give this model to somebody or try and explain the Earth with this answer. Even if it looks pretty. So I hope maybe we saw uh, a something where 
everything worked. We saw this in the morning. Something? We, we, I'm, I guess I'm hoping that they, they see uh, when they can see when things look good and when we have a good answer, and now they can see what things look like if it is not a good answer. So that's all I really wanted to, to go over. So there's, uh, there's a couple of things that we'd like to do. So it's, it's already getting close to 3 o'clock. We only have maybe an hour. And so now the question is how to make the, the best use of that. One thing that I think you, you might like is actually to have a certificate. So we just have put together a certificate. Coco is down now. He's typing your names on it. And you can go home with a certificate saying that you uh, attended the, the training course. You get, you get all of the names? Every, well, except the names of the people from the university we don't have. So we wouldn't have, there's, how many people are here from the university? Two, three, four, five, six. Maybe uh, if we have a separate piece of paper. one thing is like I, I think just the people who are here, because they didn't have been absent for three or four days, they haven't really attended. Uh, so can all of the So when you sign that, then somebody will take it down to Coco and he'll make sure that you have a certificate. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second is we've been to two sites where we've collected data. And there's been many things that were done at each site. At the Aung San Park, we first of all went out on the Wednesday and we collected four, you know, four electrode surveys for a uh, winter sounding. The sounding located, So that was one data set that we collected and we made some use of it by trying to invert it using a three layer app. Then we went out with the IRIS system, so Max taught everybody how to use that system, and we collected, how, what data sets did we collect with the IRIS system? What data set have you collected? What data sets did we collect? At the park. We, 
We yeah, but what was the very first data set that we collected? Primazo, calculate it. There was a primazo, calculate it. Set. And we did, we did one sounding, right? Sounding. So Max set the system up so that we could do sit in one place and do one sounding, and we brought that back, and then we also worked with that data. I did, and then it's another lump like that, no? The same bit of So remember, we had to truncate the the data, and we had to do various things with it. What were the next two data sets that were required? Yeah, which ones? We did a data set, yeah, but data set, data set. You mean you mean what array? I think yeah, array or made up array that look. What? Yeah, we did a winner. Yeah, winner array, winner slumberjay, right? and then we also did a, a dipole dipole. Okay, so that's a lot of work. That's three different data sets. Data set two, is it two? No. So we could, we should use those data sets to learn something about DC resistivity and the processing of the data. The DC resistivity time chain rule, lay down the other, look at the how the data process look at how the time and throw stone sets, you know, it doesn't know who you are. So I've started a case history. That uh, case history to cool. uh, look at it. Eh? Yeah. So it's going to be aquifer identification. And right now there's just two people who are listed as authors, but there could be more. So uh, Coco and Kevin, oh, I forgot your A. Uh, but people who contribute to, to this case history uh, can be become famous and listed as an author. <laughs> So the major and the major are the case history go develop look that one number part or the number and number team up no so me in maso So the case history has got it's going to have an abstract abstract what's abstract an abstract is a summary that tells <laughs> what the case history is about if you publish a paper Every paper will have an abstract. So I mean, she made it. So it is a job me took off. So this one says, we collect multiple arrays of DC resistivity data and invert them using a 1D parametric. 1D parametric, don't get it. DC resistivity data, come get it, don't get it, don't get it. A 1D smooth inversion. 1D smooth inversion, don't get it. And a 2D inversion. 2D inversion, don't get it. The 2D inversions were carried out with different inversion algorithms. 2D inversion are different. Inversion program, you know, they're okay, right? Yeah, we compare the results and show the limitations of having only a few data in a sounding experiment and interpreting them in 1D. 1D, I don't know if you have data, I don't know if you have data, I don't know if you have data, I don't know. The data were collected as part of a Geoscientist Without Borders project. GWB, And the open source resources SIMPAG were used to carry out the information. Background information about the project and the use of DC resistivity can be found in our blog, and there's a link. A blog mark, the two name mine. So why do this? Why do we want to have a case history? I thought case history, history rule, no matter. What would be the advantages of having, taking the effort to write down what was done at the site, what the processing was, and what the, what the eventual outcome would be? Why, why would that be useful, and how would you use it? I thought case history, yeah, you get it, but you don't get it. Case is very much in the case the located down the road, they took by maybe not located a sense in the home. I thought case is three years, I put the year out. 
jemand hat Angst. Can you think of one reason why this would be important for you? That's very good. Yeah, so this it's a way of it's called archiving. Is archiving? Uh, uh, keep uh, yeah, storing, uh, keeping track of what's a good word for archiving? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, storing for the recording like Yeah, sort of recording, keeping track of something. So it's it's a it's a good way to archive so if we come back in two years we see what how things have changed but even more important it provides a, an example of how DC resistivity could be used because sometimes people would just get a few measurements to take a sounding and we realize now that that is not a very good way to acquire the data. And even you, if you, in one year from now, if you try to remember what you did in the park, you will have forgotten. So that's what you remember. So, if we can, if we can capture all of the information that went on in that park and all of the analysis, it will help other people in the future to work with DC resistivity and to understand what things are important. And imagine that if right now we started with every field survey that we do, that we made a case history. So, could not look at a fee, case history that could look at it as a puzzle. So that means that we do, we do a setup here for every case history. That we history, do history we, yeah, we do a setup of why we're why we're doing it. We talk about the data collection. Here was our way layout of our of our wires. We talk about the physical properties. We talk about the instruments that were used. We talk about the first data set. That with these, you know, just a few data and how difficult it was to interpret. Yeah, and then we talk about going out with the iris system and collecting a line of uh, sounding data. So, and we go through and we talk about which data were collected, what the processing, what the processing was. So, for instance, some of the processing, we got rid of some of these points. And we carry that through 
through the inversions and the interpretations. That would be a really big check mark. This would be something that would be really useful, not only for people who participated, but for anybody else who wants to do DC resistivity. So the the delimit of the case which is we look at the the matter that the nanar into my hope and a cha cha do the DC resistivity la dain the way to a yang of the house of fire. So imagine that we did that for every survey that was carried out. Every village that we went to, we compiled a case history. So to I like that you are a little case history. That would be a very valuable resource. An example of this, you can look at, uh, it's in, uh, it's, it's one of the DRD examples. It's called, uh, it, it's a vertical electric chambre up in Sip and Malami. So I'm a VS3 monomer. And you know, so we have the setup. The setup divided. Talk about the properties. Properties. And we talk about the data. Here's the data. And then the inversions that we did and the inversions that were done by the DRD. So here was an example with that the DRD had. Yeah, look at result bar. And here is our smooth inversion. And a smooth inversion to the By putting all of that together, you now have a resource that provides a lot of information <laughs> about the state of groundwater in various villages and the use of DC resistivity. So the Lotare, we were Lotare Haru, who cases in the Tanam is enough, who can see that they are here. The Ni Tao. Record of having that. So we plan to work with the TOTs next week, but even if you're not a TOT, you could contribute to these uh, documents. information <coughs> Th these are all uh, Google documents, but they're very, very easy to use. For instance, here's, here is a Google Doc, and there's text here. Uh, I, could, I could add text. I could say, hello, I'm adding text. If I could type. And now you've got, now this has changed. But the, the change is always done on one document. That means everybody can participate by working on a single document. So So it's not like Kevin's working on one document with a version and somebody else is working on another version and then you have to merge them. It gets rid of all of that. If this is now, if you sign on to this uh, uh, URL, you will see this document. I tell you, sign in with that the document that you have about it. And everybody within the seven steps will have something to contribute. So we, we, we did the work in Ang Sang Park Right? Everybody was involved, so you will remember something that was important, and you could just add it to the document. And when you're reading the, when you're reading the document, uh, there might be something that you think, oh, that is not, uh, not sure about that. And so you actually might want to highlight it, and then you could make a comment. And then you could make a comment said, hmm, 
I'm not sure this is right. And then you make a comment, and everybody else who's connected with this document will read that comment. So the document name will take some delay to read the Dian Rui or Dururi or Golo take some delay to read the comment book to it. Do you have a document? Application to copy the document. Cases read the mother Yeta and the Dao, what are they down? How we last seven days? I have the data who's a copy. I don't know. I love you. Go many like you. The comment of the Yan 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 Interactive chat about the mother. Take set block. Then I'm just a reality. Google document look over it. So we've talked a lot about open source resources and sharing, uh, and that's where all of the apps are coming from. So there are other people out there in this community who are trying to work together to make things that benefits everybody. So that you go to the Malaysia, the Malaysia, the little go on the community, the things are about the quiet one. That one is about Xin. Xin is about the local government. So this is a way for you to contribute back to the open source community or to contribute back to all of the people in Myanmar. Because imagine the people who are in Mon DRD, you do a survey, you make a case history about all the things that you did, the problems that you had, the successes that you had, everything goes into that case history. So I will look at it, but we'll look at a case if we do our cases. Now somebody from the Union DRD hasn't been working on this. He looks at this case history and he says, ah, okay, I learned something from this. So now he's learning, somebody in your country is learning from what you just did. But you don't look at a case history, go. So if if he learns from him and she learns from him and she learns from somebody else, then eventually everybody learns a lot and you really build up the field. So rather than working small groups you find a way of interacting with more more people. So, the other day, the daily my little bit is up, no? The little bit also in the networking chair, no problem. So, what goes the other day? What goes the other day? The other day, 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 the case histories are also a valuable way of communicating with the GWB group in North America. Because suppose that you come along here, you collected some data, and maybe, well, you, you collect some data, you try to invert it, and something is going wrong. If, if everything is in a case history, we can look at it and say, oh, this is the problem you were trying to do, this is the survey that you did, this is the data that you collected, and oh, here's the problem. So, I tell you, you don't have any case history that I tell you, you know, I tell you, I tell you, oh, that did not look up at it. So there's many, many reasons to use case histories for your advantage. And, and next week for the TOTs who are here, we'll start to compile these well, there will be four case histories because we did one at the park, 
We did one at the village, and then we will plan to do two more data acquisitions next week. So, we will have a lot of data acquisitions. So we'll look at the data, summarize the data. Yeah, invert it and try to complete the story as much as possible. Okay, so that's that's case histories. I, I, I wanted to talk about that briefly because there might be people here who are not TOTs and they will not be here next week. The other thing about how to capture all, er, uh, the information that we have provided in this course, uh, the first the first linkage is through our website. So maybe people want to just try accessing that now? So this is geosci.xyz. Geosci.xyz. Yeah, or Z, yeah, Z or Z. <laughs> So here we capture all of the courses that that we've done, our previous courses. We gave one in Argentina not so long ago. Uh, this course, of course, is, is, is right here. Look at a course for not go long, go long by it, you know. And the course material is, course is, material is by clicking that. And here's these access all of the all of the slides so if we wanted to do I don't know, parametric inversion maybe so here's here's the slides that that we had for for inversion what is inversion parametric inversion talks about parameters and then it'll talk about the here's here's uh, Ren's example from a couple of years ago and then here's the three layer notebook right talk about the apps so that's you, you've had hard copy handouts but here's this is a, this is a very nicely organized way of looking at all of the slides that have presented been presented in this course. So now let's take my sheet. I saw you. I saw you in the sheet. I saw you. 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 There you have it, and then, then there's this is also an access to the case histories. Will eventually a case history in the So this is this is the one that um, I had just showed you moments ago. Our initial plan here was that there were four, no, there were five. Uh, Cases, well, there are five soundings that were taken through the DRD. We were planning to show one and have you individually work through each of the other four. Which one? For the, for the cases? Really? Yeah, for these, for these guys here. Because they, these were data that were previously. So as time goes on, okay, we'll start to 
add some more case histories. We'll do one for Ong San Park, we'll do one for the village, <laughs> and we'll <laughs> gradually <laughs> build this up. <laughs> so this can serve as a permanent repository for your case histories. <laughs> Documented, yeah. And then there's, for a few apps, there's some questions, and you, you can look at those. <coughs> so, how are questions this year? Questions that you are Anyway, so that's, that's our organization of material. We still have stuff, we still have slides and a few things to put up. It's not 100% complete, but that's we'll be here for another week. So any any questions about the material or accessing the, the material? The material So GSI.xyz, yes? Material, they would have gathered and put the legal aid that she had. I think she had. I go by my match of pieces. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, so let's, uh, let's talk about that. Um, so I have heard most people in Myanmar like to use Facebook. <laughs> I have the idea I can make GWB project Facebook group. So GWB, Facebook group to If you add me and join the group, then I will put the description and I will put the links to everything. I just need a pretty picture. Okay. So, <laughs> so I, I'm calling it GWB Myanmar. Uh, it's not finished yet. I'm making it now. <laughs> but we have the purpose, so we want to have all of the links to everything in one place. And because it is Facebook group, you can ask each other questions. So we have how to run the apps with Jupyter Notebook. You click the link. Oh, didn't find it. Uh, so I need to maybe fix that. Uh, so I'm going to try and put the links. Uh, I think this one works. So this one downloaded the uh, the notebooks in that zip file. Just notebook or download of Bahama. And we have the one for case histories if this works. Case history she may. And the lecture slides. So if I make this, is will this be useful to you? Yeah, so you okay. So all of the things we will have the links and try to put the explanation. So uh, very good to know what the websites are, uh, and but I will try to make the Facebook group. You and you can click to get all of the things.
So you can see that uh, a, a lot of effort is, is being made on our part to try to communicate. So this, th this is challenging because of the difference in language and, and culture, but by finding, um, by, by finding technology that works for you and that we can interact with uh, can make it work. So this is why the, the Facebook uh, page that Devin is talking about and that he's developing, that seems like that's a, a nice interface to, to work and to capture and to, you know, someplace easy for you to sign on and go to other places, for instance, the, uh, our course website. So I think that's, that's <coughs> mostly it. I, from the perspective of people who won't be here next week, our organizational plan is to make very good use of this group, the TOTs, of which I think there are now maybe 16, because there's 11 from DRD and the university wants five. Uh, so we'll all be meeting next week uh, to further train and discuss. And crucial to that is for us to be able to communicate with the TOTs and there's a number of ways that we can do that. It's going to require uh, some TOTs to be able to communicate well in English. So, I don't know but there are at least three people, three TOTs, whose English is good enough that we can communicate. And so maybe with that, if we have a Facebook page, do you actually write in, can you write in English? Facebook page, sorry, no, I'll give you a check box, my English is really Yeah? Yes, you can write in English. Okay. So that's that, that, that's important because I think if you can if you can write English and it's the same with uh, altering the case histories um, the words need are, can can be simple but they need to be in English and if you do your best attempt to write something in English uh, I think that will be enough because somebody else can always go through and clean right. things up. Yeah. Correct So the goal for next week, this will work, is that we'll try to see if we can put all this together. So we'll We'll try to take Devon's Facebook page. We'll try to take a case history from uh, Aung San Park. And we'll try to get people to uh, generate this case history, but to talk and ask questions among themselves in Facebook.
So that would be a that would be a tremendous victory, and it would be a real milestone if by the end of next week we could have uh, case histories for the four places that we do the data collection and have people being able to communicate through Facebook in English and contribute to those case histories. That would that would really be a success. So case history legu lobo shira. So the case history legu lobo shire. So the diga di lamet pa ye yiman che tu ye. And then one last thing, how, how many people here will not be here next week? Two, four, five. Okay. Okay, well, I, I don't have anything to give more to, to say. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if there's something kind of like say that, fine, otherwise, I think. Oh, you mean just like the speech? Well, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of done, I think. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, kind of said so everything. We can, we can just put this up and you know, with the background, we can, we can celebrate the Saturday again and we can close it on the train. Sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. So, but we have to make sure with the Coco is ready with the. Yeah, the so we'll go out. We'll or go how or about director? Is he here? Or that I don't should, know. We should, we should invite him yeah. to yeah. the closing ceremony. Okay, I'll just say. Short break. Short break, seven minutes. Also, I just want to say, yeah, thank you everyone for attending our course. Uh, did, I did you? Okay, yeah. yeah. It's okay. it's a pleasure for us to be to be your teachers. You know, we learn many things from you, and we hope that you learn many things from us. So, thank you. When I first started this work with DRD about two years ago, you know, we had many challenges at the time. Uh, I never thought that I would come back here today and we're doing things at a much bigger scale. And so I, I think, uh, thank you all for, for making this a big success. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to reiterate, it was the reason that we are here and this project has developed has been because of, of, Ke of Kevin. You know, he came, he came to us, he was passionate about doing something, he had a, he had a vision, and uh, yeah, we've been able to make that that realize and I think maybe even uh, extend that vision and hopefully have something here that is very sustainable and makes a big impact. And it's, it's, it's kind of easy to see the people here and to recognize that, okay, without Max, none of the field stuff would have gone successfully at all, right? He's like, he's, he's our man. Without Devin, there's a lot of technical stuff that would not have, have happened. But there's two other people who were on the list that we don't see on a, on a daily basis, but that they were both very important for the success of this uh, project. 
And one of those is Soggy Kang, who is the uh, postdoc at Stanford. He has been the person who's been responsible for writing most of the SIMPEG codes and, and the apps. There's another person at UBC, Joe Capriotti, who you have not really seen, but Joe has been very uh, important in, in doing the apps. And Lindsay Hagee uh, has been one of the founders of SIMPEG along with, with Soggy. And she's a, a, an organizational person. The fact that we've got a website, the fact that everything, you come in in the morning and you can click a button and there's your slides and there's your questions, that is all because of Lindsay. So there's, this is a very big group of talented people who every, each person is bringing something to this uh, working group and the whole is much greater than the sum of the parts. And all of those people deserve, I think, your appreciation and heartfelt thanks because they've been really good. Catch all that, that was a bit long. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe not the names. Oh. Uh, you know, I, Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I can try to <laughs> play it again. I can remember. Yeah. So the uh, ที่จะกลับไปแล้วดีเลยปีละมาหมดใช่มั้ยมาหมดกว่าไว้จะแม็กซ์ไว้ที่สุดในสมัยนั้นแต่จะเราเล่าเรื่องดีเลยที่เอ
So I think the last thing that we need to do is to find the certificates. And yes. so to give out the certificates. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen, actually. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, I think we're probably. I could stop. Yeah.